The reflection of the wine glass seems a little too dark, so we'd have to increase the exposure on that. Let's back out on this a little bit and look at the whole scene. Also, the glass of liquor is a bit too bright, and overall the image is too contrasty. So if I were to go in and try to produce a finish shot on this, the first thing I would do is I would increase the exposure on the first uh, pop of the strobe, and that would drop the contrast. Now let's try something else with a paddle. Instead of reflecting the image of the wine glass onto another object, let's just layer this image right onto the film. Okay, so we'll, we'll just drop this right in on top of the, uh, the still life here. First, let's do the base exposure, though. Shutter open, filter in, pop, there we go. Now we'll drop this right in over the top. We'll go about five seconds since it's directly onto the film. Now we're going to lay another image in there. Okay, here we go. Okay. This is the only sheet that we shot on this shot. I'm actually quite pleased with it. I think that this technique has a lot of, uh, a lot of potential. What I want to introduce you to now is the skimmer. It's a wide beam of light, five inches wide, very bright. I'm going to slip on the hood. And what I'm going to do is use this almost like a potato peeler on this head. I'm going to skim this slit of light around, just like you would peel a potato with it. And you can see how it picks up light on the high spots. OK, let's dim the lights, and we'll actually try this. Now we're going to skim this carefully around. Once I get the pattern going right, I'll open the shutter. OK, a little on the hair and on the ear, a little on the neck, too. And we'll skim it across the newspaper, very low across the newspaper. Now, I'll flip in the saw filter and come just in under the newspaper here, create a little glow under the paper and behind it. And we'll also put some light on the uh, backdrop. Okay, let's run that. I did two versions of the head. This was the first one. Uh, it's a little bit too contrasty. Again, I would up the exposure on the first uh, strobe exposure. And uh, I'd, I'd open this up a little bit. I might even bounce some light from the uh, uh, from the left side of the photograph in the first exposure. In the second version of the shot, I skimmed the light also from the front as well as from the side. Again, the contrast would still have to be worked on a little bit. I had an interesting idea some time ago on a long flight to Tokyo, and that idea was that if I could take the light from the fiber optic and turn it 90 degrees and light up a rod of light, I would have a light sword. And that light sword would do some very interesting things. For one thing, I could create a light box by simply moving it laterally across the uh, object or the subject that I was photographing. And that light box would be 20 inches long by however the length of the move was. Now, really, though, it would be the equivalent of a huge light box because I'm using it so close to the subject. Normally, you're using a soft box off of the set, so it would have to be a huge soft box in order to equal the, uh, the, the apparent size of this soft box in a photograph. Now, one of the other interesting things was that I could create a lot of different 
styles of soft boxes just by the way I use this sword. If I take it and I move it across like this and I start to turn it, you see how it fades out. Now, obviously I'm going to be pointing this light towards the subject, not toward the camera, but this is what the subject is going to be seeing and what the subject is going to reflect back at the camera. One of the other interesting things is that I can have the softbox in places that I could never put an actual softbox. For instance, I can put it between the camera and the subject. In this case, the camera and a motorcycle. And you'll see how if I move it across the motorcycle like that, it lights up the chrome very smoothly. It's generally a, a, a fairly rapid move, one smooth stroke across the chrome. Now, there are other things, unique things that I can do with it, such as on this motorcycle, I can't put a soft box between the forks to light up the fender. Well, the sword, I simply take, dive right down in with it like this, and light up the fender. Now, you can also see what happens to the color saturation of this metallic blue paint. It's phenomenal. It's very electric. If you light this motorcycle with just a big soft box, it actually degrades the color. Look at this tank when I move the light across it. Now, I could take it and just move it like it's a strip light across the tank, and you can see the color of the blue in this. I mean, it's sensational. Now, by taking it and moving it like this, I'm going to create the effect of a soft box being in front of the camera. But one of the differences is, is that I'm not going to get a silhouette of the handlebars in the tank. The soft box is between the handlebars and the tank. One of the other beauties of this, and I think this is one of the greatest things about it, is that I'm using it very close to the subject. And because of the uh, inverse square law, as we've discussed earlier, only this part of the motorcycle is going to be lit up. I'm not going to be lighting the rest of the scene. Certainly that wall back there will not have uh, any image of it showing on the film, nor would the floor, nor would the seat, only the part that I'm lighting. Now, sometimes when I'm working this way, uh, working the light onto the painted surface of the tank, I might have to take a black card and cover the, the engine. And I would just hold a black card here and I would uh, move it dodging the, uh, the chrome on the engine. So after I've painted the light on this, which I find on on a painted surface, it might take me, say, 10 seconds at 32 and a half. The ideal way to do it is to move it rapidly back and forth. If I try to make it one long, one long, <laughs> one long slow pass, uh, I will never be able to move that smooth enough to get a nice smooth reflection onto that tank. So instead, I build up the image of that softbox by moving it rapidly like that. On the chrome, however, I'm going to take one clean pass over it, just like that. Um, I have to find the right angle, of course. And on this motorcycle, the angle between the, the camera and the motorcycle dictates that the light, the reflection, has to come from below the uh, engine. So I'm going to come just like this. One clean pass like that. Now, another interesting feature is I can wrap the highlight right around the tailpipe. Now, again, you can't wrap a softbox around a tailpipe. But I can wrap this around the tailpipe and therefore wrap the highlight right around the, uh, the curve of the chrome. If you're trying to light chrome with a, a softbox that's off the set, you're going to always have a black line on the edge of your comb. Um, I can also use this to light the, the seat, the rims, one pass across like that, the pipes, and again, I can roll it over the pipes to create a very round light. Let's go ahead and set both of these at one half power. This one's already set there.
What we're going to do here is shoot this bike with a medium-sized softbox to demonstrate the difference between lighting it with a softbox and lighting the bike with the light swords. Okay, drop the light. The point I want to make with the example of shooting the motorcycle with the softbox is that the softbox will light the entire scene while it's lighting the motorcycle. Okay, now that we've seen the basic softbox look, let's go ahead and try it with the sword, see what we can get. All right, we're going to start with the tank right here. What I want to do is I want to line it up with the, uh, the pinstriping on there. Okay, now that I've got it lined up just right. All right. Another thing that I want to do is just come in here and give the feeling of a soft box right at the front of the bike. Now you notice there's a lot of banging around. You obviously couldn't use a uh, fluorescent tube for this. Let's go in on the heads of the uh, engine now. You can see it's just one quick move. And after playing around a little bit with the engine, I found the best way was to kind of come from the back and underneath with one sweeping motion. Okay. Go ahead and do the fender. Okay. Clay, why don't you come in with the flag real quick? Just grab one of the small ones. And what I want you to do is flag off the tank right in here. Turn it the other way. No, long ways. This way. Okay. Now I just want to take one pass right down the chrome. And you can see how he was just rotating the, uh, the flag right there, just like dodging a print. Um, let's come back and we'll do this chrome right back here. One pass again, I found. All right, and on the top of the back fender, We'll go ahead and do the lights. Now I'm just lighting up the turn signal. And we'll do the headlight. The other turn signal. And we may as well do the reflector. It was around here someplace. OK. Now, I'm also going to add a little bit of light to the tank. I'm going to go to a little larger mask. And there is one pinpoint of light. That's going to fall into the highlight that I already created. And you notice how I'm shaping the light to the shape of the tank. And just finding the optimum. There we go, right there about three seconds. Now I'm going to put the sword back on. Actually this will be the short sword. And I just want to light up the the uh, Chrome Suzuki logo. Now that's going to completely burn out on video but it'll come out on film. So it's going to be one sweep past, one smooth sweep. There we go. We get the seats. Now let's just give it a beautiful highlight right in this curve. OK, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pop the background in there. There we go.